Hello everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to Mesa County Library's Culture Fest. Today we're going to be interviewing Ana Marte. She is from Puerto Rico and she's going to explain to us her culture, what the library system is like, and other different aspects within that culture. So we're gonna get right into it and start interviewing Ana. So my name is Ana Maria Marte Sanchez, but going by Ana or Marte is just fine. <laughs> so where would your country be on the map? All right, so to find Puerto Rico, all you really have to do is like, look at Florida and show your, your finger down <laughs> mm -hmm. and go like through the Caribbean, uh, past Cuba, past Haiti and the Dominican Republic. And there you would find Puerto Rico, you know, stopped up in the middle yeah. of the greater Antilles and the lesser Antilles. Mm -hmm. And what would you like to share about your, uh, with us about your country? So a lot of people don't know, know this. Uh, Puerto Rico is a U.S. Commonwealth and it became one in the 1917, so around the time the U.S. entered the First World War. And uh, Commonwealth is really just a fancy way of saying that Puerto Rico is a non-incorporated territory of the United States. It means that we're American citizens, we get to move around the states normally, but we don't really get to vote when we're residing in the Iceland. Yeah, and I mean, I'm sure that's interesting because like everything around here in the like, United States affects you guys. So, exactly. like, having so the, the policies the, technically do affect us a bit, yeah. but we can't really, we do have a house, uh, chair in Congress, but you know, it's, it's a very small voice, I guess, when you, Think mm -hmm. about it. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. And um, yeah, so Spanish is still our main language, uh, despite of our 100 year relationship with the US. And uh, we're technically the main exporters of reggaeton, which is a Latin music that's a mixture of hip hop and reggae. And so it was uh, first, it was born actually thanks to this relationship we have with the US when uh, Great Migration happened in the 70s and we uh, formed sort of like a community with uh, black Americans in the US, in Harlem or in the Bronx. And so that led to uh, reggaeton becoming a thing and then uh, them bringing it back to the Iceland and it just becoming mm. a thing. Yeah, and it like blew up in like the 2000s, right? Especially in the 2000s yeah. after Gasolina came out. Oh yeah, <laughs> Gasolina is like one of the most iconic reggaeton songs, I yeah. feel like, cause like- It's addicting. Know, it is, it is, like you <laughs> get to dance in. Do you have a favorite story, song, food, place, or something you feel special to share with us? I'm sure you, like you brought these amazing props, so. Go ahead and just kind of talk to us about like what we have going on here. What we got the going on here. Bag. Okay. Yeah. So, this book right here is really uh, about based on the Taino story about how sort of the world came to be and how Puerto Rico came to be and yeah, that's what it's about. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the illustrations here are just beautiful. Like yeah, the awesome. whales and then. <laughs> the the Iceland. Yeah. This is supposed to be Puerto Rico. We yeah. look at it. Um, yeah, it all, like if you look at the book, <laughs> it all came from a little pumpkin. A little that, pumpkin? Yeah, a little pumpkin that broke. That broke. Oh, and it sort cute. of led to the sea coming out. <laughs> oh my gosh, this yeah. pumpkin was just like Pandora's box. Literally, yeah. and it led to all the fishies coming out. Oh, wow. You know, I don't know. <laughs> oh, this must have been a huge pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, apparently. And it just led to Boriken being born, mm -hmm. which is like the Taino name for Puerto Rico, because Puerto Rico is really just a colonial name that was given to us oh. by uh, Spain, obviously. Mm -hmm. Rich port, it literally yeah. oh, translates yeah. to rich to that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this book is really just about uh, Afro Latino, especially uh, Afro Puerto Rican poets. And they talk about Puerto Rican issues, um, the conflict of, of identity, essentially identity politics. Mm -hmm. So let's see, being conflicted about uh, your African roots and also being conflicted if you were born and raised in the U.S., like yeah. a Puerto Rican born and raised in the U.S., that mm -hmm. conflict you have with whether you're American or whether you're Puerto Rican or where you stand in yeah. this sort of yeah. world. Yeah, it's like, how do I identify, how do I as? I yeah. identify mm -hmm. myself as? And 
Wow. Yeah, which is obviously yeah. I mean, a it, very yeah yeah scholars <laughs> uh, sort of debate about what it means to be Puerto Rican, and they sort of address that as well. Yeah, I mean, reading this book, I'm sure it gives you like a different perspective that like you would have not yeah. really had. Like yeah, so oh, that's pretty <laughs> cool. And then what about the okay? So these are called pleneras. And they're usually played around Christmas times when you do a parranda or, or of the like, where it's like uh, you go to someone's house and suddenly, like, do an asalto or something. You know, asalto typically stands for like an assault or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, you go to their house and you start playing music, and uh, it's like a musical assault, basically. Musical <laughs> assault. Yeah. You start playing music and you go into their house and start eating food. Oh my gosh, that sounds like fun. Is this, uh, this is like a called a parranda? Yeah. Like. Oh. Parranda, and, yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, they're called pleneras because the type of music that's usually played on them is called plena as mm -hmm. well. Wow, yeah. that's pretty fun. Yeah, and it's obviously got uh, African roots. Yeah, it's pretty cool. What in Mesa County feels like home? So, aside from the obvious, my family. <laughs> you yeah, know, uh, the library sort of feels like home to me. Um, Books have always been like a huge sort of comfort, mm -hmm. sort of source of comfort, and so um, just being able to go in and read my books is a comfort in itself, yeah. and it sort of feels like home because I read there, mm -hmm. I read here, <laughs> so it's just like, it's like you're reading everywhere. Yeah. yeah, and so how was the libraries like in your um, country? Yeah, so libraries are sort of like uh, regarded as like a high brow kind of thing. It's mostly for people who are in college or people who are academics or uh, do research, you know. And it's regarded also like a place where encyclopedias are stored. It's not really regarded as like a place that's catered, you know, towards mm -hmm. the public. It's yeah. not really... Uh, it's like you're not going to find like a fiction book or like... Not a necessarily. Yeah. I mean, there probably is like a small section, but yeah. no one thinks about it. For example, if I told someone from back home, oh, I work at a library, or I go to the library, they would be like, oh, who even goes to the library? It's yeah. like, that's like the first impression, who even goes to yeah, the library? Because it's, like it's not like something normal people do, yeah, especially here, for fun. Yeah. And here it's just like, oh, I'm gonna go to the library, check out a book, or yeah, like, gonna, you know, there's a lot of resources that like the library gives to like the public, but yeah, like, over it's, there it's just- Yeah, it's all, yeah. For it's, academics and stuff. Yeah, it's, wow. it's frustrating. Yeah, Because <laughs> yeah. you sort of wish that, uh, obviously we had the facilities that the libraries have here right. back home because mm -hmm. then kids would be even more motivated to read right. and that's obviously you know a huge benefit to society. Yeah I mean and especially with all like you know the natural occurrences that are happening and yeah. like how people become like, more educated about yeah. the circumstances that you live in mm -hmm. is uh, ideal. You're right. Yeah mm -hmm. and also about what goes on in the world. Mm -hmm. And also just having that uh, that sort of root of a, like a, an escape almost. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, and I mean, like libraries, like it's for people to like hang out. You know, here yeah. it's just like, okay, like I'm bored. I'm just gonna head to the library. Yeah, I'm gonna up. do some reading. Yeah. Oh. But well, yeah. I'm glad that the library, you know, kind of gives you that sense of comfort. So. All right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in and being here with us while we interview Anna. It's great to see a different perspective and learn different cultures within the Mesa County. You know, we do have diversity here. And so just talking to someone from a different country and kind of experiencing, you know, and sharing her thoughts about living in Mesa County and just explaining to us how Puerto Rico lifestyle is great. So thank you guys so much for being here.